<laughs> this is always the hardest part for me <laughs> when I think about it. Never punish? Never punish. Don't just go, bro. Hey everyone, this is Curb and I bring you another standard match. Today we have myself once again piloting Willista on the right, and I am going to be going up against a deck that I don't think I've featured on the channel quite yet, which is going to be Omno Grugia. So I think if you did see my tier list, I did rank Omno Grugia pretty high. I think that what it's trying to do is fairly decent and can actually compete with the rest of the meta. But whether or not it reaches success, I think kind of depends on the player and a little bit of luck. Anyways, we do see my opponent doing a little bit of a cheaty cheat here where um, we're using the skill of the grade 1 there. Before we actually activate the skill of the grade 0, you can't actually do that because the grade 0 is an auto on place. And then of course this one is an act for some reason. It's just like rank or chain in that sense where you do actually have to draw first before you can soul blast the one. But in the long scheme of things, it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, do note that if you do play this deck, you kind of want to make sure that you don't do that, especially if you're going to a regional tournament. You know, people are going to call you out on that. Anyways, we're just going to go ahead and draw off of the starter, which we were supposed to do before we searched. Uh, but we are going to swing at the Vanguard. I'm just going to be guarding that. Once again, I think I've said this multiple times. Melissa doesn't really need any damage until you get until your grade 3 turn. But looks like that was a pretty lucky guard because we saw a critical trigger coming on down here. So that is going to allow me to stay here at zero. So I think my hand is a little bit really good and I'm kind of deciding on what I want to discard. Uh, I was thinking about discarding that Yuika because uh, I was wondering should I actually be rushing against this opponent. Uh, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to or not. Uh, but in the end I decided okay let's just ditch the defense and let's call the Yuika and kind of rush a little bit. So, of course, using the grade one skill to tuck in the Ophelia because I can't even use her right now. It's gonna be not until next turn. So putting her to soul, grabbing the gem, playing the gem, drawing the two cards, um, getting a decent hand, I think. Uh, unfortunately, no Ramona, so we're just gonna be stuck with a Yuika who's gonna swing at the Vanguard, hitting into a defensive, meaning that this Vanguard is gonna be a one to pass, um, kind of uh, risky. We do have to decide whether we want to guard this. If we guard this, like we can guard 5k or 15k. Um, but, you know, it, it's really up to the opponent. It's like we are going to be no guarding it and hitting into a no trigger there, meaning that they're not going to be taking any damage uh, from this attack. So we do still have... Um, <laughs> things going fairly well it's pretty unfortunate hit that defensive we didn't get to push out any damage uh, damage or any cards from hand but at the same time you know we do have to, you do kind of have to deal with that if that rush had worked it would have been we would have been in a much better situation but you know sometimes your rush just doesn't work riding into the grade two we are going to be searching the deck for a single trigger and i believe it goes into the soul looks like we are going to opt to put the front trigger now i'm going to know grugia is a very interesting deck when it comes to its trigger lineup. Just because of the mechanic, you do kind of want to play at least one copy of every single trigger type. So most of the time it ends up being something like 8 crit, 4 draw, the OT, and then either 2 fronts or 2 draws and then one of the other. Because you do actually want to be able to bind one of every single uh, order type. Uh, of course, going for the front here. Uh, usually in this situation you would search out the copy that you only have one copy of so if you only play one draw then you probably want to put that into the soul uh, so we're putting the front there uh, swinging just checking into a goon ram I do actually need at least one damage thing into a defensive critical trigger which is not really gonna matter that much uh, but anyways we're going into this grade 3 turn my hand is not really the greatest I think uh, I can see I have an, uh, an Ophelia there, so it looks like we're going to be discarding a Trixie, who is a new card that I had to add, uh, taking out the, I believe this current build is playing with the Valdebrosh, Valdebrosh and not the Elevira at the moment. It's a change that I have made since this video was filmed. Uh, this video is actually a little bit kind of old, um, but, you know, it's still good. This is still the meta, uh, com considering even though set 13 has come out at the time of the re this recording, uh, it's not going to be relevant for the last couple of BCSs that we are quickly approaching. 
but of course using the the Willista skill checking the top five cards of the deck I see a heal trigger I see an evergreen there uh, it's not looking like we're getting too many good things we're gonna be calling a Yuika as well as another copy of Trixie I think at this instance I do still have a Persona Ride in hand so using the Trixie to dig is probably not entirely necessary you know it could always cycle but depending on what I have in hand it doesn't the cycle might not be as necessary. The Yuka is always nice. Uh, I've noticed, especially once you take out the Elevira, you do kind of want for boosters. You don't really have a ton of just like great attackers. So just having a Yuika there and knowing that, especially in this matchup, it's going to stick around quite uh, for quite some time is uh, good to note. Uh, looks like we are actually going to be moving the Trixie to the back row. And of course, that only means one thing. That means some... Uh, not always going to set Elevira. Ophelia's are going to be coming on down. Because obviously we do need the card in the back row. And a lot of times I like putting a normal unit there. Um, and not shuffling back a trigger. Especially if I had to call it from hand. I would just rather the triggers either stay in deck. So I don't want to call them from deck. Or stay in my hand. Uh, so that it can be used for guard. But anyway. Swing the first Ophelia for 21. The rare instances where you boost the first Ophelia swing, uh, mostly because he is still at grade 2. So 21 is still a very good magic number. That's a 15k guard. Whereas if I had just swung unboosted, that would just be a 5k guard. So just getting a little bit more shield value out of him. Even if he does have a draw trigger. Uh, actually, the draw trigger doesn't even work because it's not like 19. It's actually 21. Swinging the Vanguard for a 33. Going to be taking this one. Jar check into that Evergreen and then a PG. So two really good defensive options there, especially since um, Amagruja is going to be reducing the ability of my triggers to serve as guardians. Um, hitting into a defensive heal there. Uh, so very unfortunate. We still have not been able to push a single point of damage. Uh, and the Vanguard is at 20k now. Now, since we're Ballista, everything still does hit. Uh, but, you know, it's just going to mean that it's that easier to guard. So we get another 28. Since it is still on grade 2, the defensive means that this is still another 10k to 15k guard. Probably going to be giving a 15. Or we could just try and take it and hope for another defensive. Um, we do have a ton of cards in hand. But at the same time, we're at 1 damage. We can just afford to take... Um, we can also afford to take both these attacks. Amanagruja isn't really a deck that needs a ton of CB. You need like one for the Vanguard. Uh, but we get lucky and hit into another defensive. So this last swing for 36 is just going to be a 15 point guard. Guarding there with the heal trigger uh, to block the last attack. So we got away with only guarding for 15k. This was only just like the first grade 3 turn. So it doesn't really matter that much. But of course using the Yuka skill to bounce back the Ophelia because I am very quickly running out of Ophelia's. If you have noticed, one is in the soul, one is on field, and then of course one is in hand. So that means I only have one copy left in the deck. So I want to make sure that they don't get attacked into because I really value Ophelia's for the later game. Because she is just a much better attacker than Ramona in most instances. Anyways, riding into the Amanagruja, checking the top five, adding either a Masks or a Amanagruja. Uh, of course, adding the Amagruja there, the Persona Ride. Of course, you don't ever really Persona Ride into it. You just rewrite it to get more advantage. And then you use your Mask in order to Persona Ride. So, just going to be activating that Mask. Checking the top five cards of the deck. It is totally possible to whiff off this. Because I don't think they play very many of the wrenches. Well, most builds don't. But it looks like we did actually hit there. Getting the Mask Amanagruja. Uh, probably not like... It's mostly a plus, I think. But, you know, you, the, the real key that you want is to get the Mask of Hydrogen in the drop zone so that you can actually use its skill. Which looks like we are going to be using the base Omnigurgia skill in order to Soul Blast 1 and then just bind a trigger unit. And then, of course, we probably want to proc uh, the Mask here. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take the Mask, put it into the Soul, and then ride the Mask from hand and then since I am in three it is going to allow us to persona ride so it's looking like this is going to be a pretty strong turn so calling out a Google Ram using the skill to soul charge soul charging a PG hurts a little bit but uh, especially against Willista because Willista is a deck that you definitely do want a lot of PGs against uh, using the skill to soul blast three drawing the one card um, looks like we <laughs> do have some other options here Binding the heal trigger there off of the Omnigrugia skill, removing the other Omnigrugia. Uh, it kind of got put off camera, but that's exactly what happened. 
uh, because that is obviously the Mask Hydrant Seal. Calling out this Misery Wing, Soul Blasting another two in order to draw another card. And I think that is all cards out from the Soul. Um, it doesn't really matter because Omnigruji itself doesn't really need any Soul. Uh, calling the Ruin Collector to Soul Charge another one. That is an optional one, and it looks like we did Soul Charge a trigger there. So a little unfortunate, but that card, Ruin Collector, is very important because it does count as two rear guards. So when you restand with the Omnigrugia, you can just suck that, that Ruin Magician up, and you don't actually have to minus as much as you normally would. Um, this is going to be swing at the end for our 31. Uh, I'm going to use the rule of restanding vanguards where you take the first one. Unfortunately, hitting into a critical trigger here, so I am going to be pushed 2 3 right away, not hitting into a single defensive. Although, against Omnigrusia, uh, defensives are not always, you know, viable or usable. Uh, as the second swing comes in for 33, another 2 damage. I do kind of have to block this. I'm just deciding how I want to do it. I do have that PG, but I also have the Evergreen and some other defensive cards. My front triggers are not yet minus 5,000 shields, so if I use those right now, I don't have to worry about them losing power later. I did actually get a little bit lucky that my opponent decided to bind the heal trigger instead of the front, because I don't think I have any heals at the moment, but you know. <laughs> it's like I am gonna be deciding to just PG this, playing it safe, discarding the Valshbron, um, I hope I have another one in hand because that would be a really good discard target off of my Persona ride. Um, but Drive Check is pretty dry there. But this other rear guard is very annoying. It is a gets an extra 5k for every single um, or different name. I almost said order card. Every different named or different type, not different name, different type of uh, trigger unit. Uh, so it is going to be swinging for a 38 with that boost from Google Ram. So only three attacks there, which is, I guess, kind of unfortunate on um, the But of course, Persona Ride discarding the Critical Trigger in order to add the Order uh, Gem card back to the hand. And then looks like we're going to go ahead and pop off that Willis skill, checking the top five, hoping to get, I guess, probably a Ramona here is what I would want. But it looks like we're going to end up having to go for double Trixie, which is, Trixie is all right and all, but she's just not as good as... Ramona in most cases she only gets 5k when she attacks a grade 3 unit if you played a gem this turn whereas Ramona is going to be at 20k so a little 5k doesn't make a huge difference most of the time but you know you always want to just have bigger numbers uh, looks like we are actually going to be using the Trixie skill tucking in that Ophelia that we added back to our hand last turn in order to search for a Wista because I think at this point I don't have another Persona ride so I want to be able to dig for it. Unfortunately, not hitting it off the top five. So instead, I do get to draw a card. Not drawing into it. Looks like it drew into that Ramona. Um, and I'm going to decide probably not to call it, I think. Just because I think I want to keep as much advantage as I can right now. My opponent is only at two versus my four. So things could feasibly... I could feasibly die in the next turn. Um, and I do want to keep as many cards in hand. Especially since, you know, my shield is going to be getting minus that much more next turn probably at least another two triggers uh types for front and then draw well the front's the only one that really matters to me other than ot i suppose but um in the end it doesn't it doesn't make a huge impact but you know i still want to keep that in mind all right so it looks like we are going to go ahead and start that attacks off with the trixie for just a 25 um still a pretty beefy number does hit into uh i guess not quite magical numbers. If that had been a Ramona, that would have been a 30, which would have been a 20-point guard instead of this 15, um, which is a little bit hard to guard. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, swinging the... Um, what was that? The... Ele not elevator. The Ophelia. Hitting into another heal trigger, um, which is, yet again, that's like three defensive triggers, um, all ruining my day here as we swing the Ballista using the skill to restand the Trixie here. Um, I think what I was also digging for was a Volstabron. Um, If I had been able to call that and give my front row an extra 5k, this would have made so much more impact on all these numbers. This 20 would have been a 28. This would have been a 30. Um, but I do hit into a heal trigger, and I actually hit into another heal trigger. And I get to basically counter charge too, um, because heal triggers are Willis's only method of counter charge. Uh, so just hitting into that, hitting to another defensive heal trigger. Um, this time it's actually going to go off because I did heal down twice. So in this single turn, there have been four heals activated or triggered, I suppose. Three of which actually procced, which is, 
I don't know. I guess that's really funny that that managed to happen. But th that double heal does actually put me in a very livable situation here. Um, I don't really have to worry about dying next turn probably. Uh, even if I don't have a ton of cards in hand. I'm uh, going to be swinging the Trixie now for 48 with the power of that trigger. As well as the boost from Yuika. Um, but it is, of course, a 48 that is hitting into a 33k Vanguard, meaning that this is just a 20k guard. Um, if we want to guard that, that's two cards probably. Um, but, you know, it's probably worth it. But at the same time, you're only at three. You can probably afford to take it. Imagine you get another defensive here, and then that other attack kind of just fizzles because I think it is at 28, 38, 46. So that is right now a 15k guard. Uh, which is something you don't really hear very often. A 48, a 46k attack only. Hit, oh, it's 56. Um, gonna be swinging, not hitting into the defensive, thankfully. And then this last attack is gonna be guarded with that over trigger. Um, probably just wanted to get in the drop maybe in order to bind it and prevent me from activating mine and giving the 100 million. Gonna be rewriting into the base Omnigrugia, checking the five top five cards of the top of the deck adding either an Amagrugia or a copy of the Mask. Um, looks like it is going to be a Mask uh, Amagrugia there that is going to be added off that top five. Uh, let's see, we're going to be using the skill in order to Soul Blast one, binding the over trigger. So that means I cannot be saved by a defensive over trigger at this moment. Um, but, you know, uh, well, I guess the mine is still in deck. Using the skill of the Hot Mask of Hydrogen in order to tuck it into the soul and once again rewrite into the Mask um, Omnigrugia, I forgot his name for, for a second, calling out another was a Ruined Magician, and um, looks like we're going to opt to not Soul Charge this time. Uh, we don't really need it. Uh, we could use Guggenram again here We if we have another one of the, what is it, Dreadwing or Destwing? I don't know. I, for, I already forgot what all these cards are called, but looks like we are going to be using the Guggenram there, uh, drawing the single card. Uh, as you can see here, Omnigrugia does have a pretty beefy hand. Although I will say a lot of that hand is thanks to the fact that we've been getting so many defensive triggers, which are, you know, keeping us from um, having to guard as much. But looks like we do use the skill of the mask in order to remove the Omgrugia, putting the draw trigger there instead of the front trigger, which is very fortunate for me because it means I still have 20k guards. Um, but swinging the Vanguard in at 31. Going to be guarding with that front trigger for 33. That is currently a one to pass. And then if I add another 10k shield, that should make it a 2 to pass. So we're going to be calling that front trigger, that front trigger, that heal trigger, um, which is just going to be a 10k because it does get minus 10 or minus 5k since it is one of the cards in the bind zone. Hitting a critical trigger on the first drive check there, being very scary. Um, but thankfully, the second check is just a blank, so I don't have to worry about just dying right here now. Um, this swing is for 33. I do kind of have to block this one. This is two crit. Um, using the evergreen to give my Vanguard an extra 25. That puts me at 38. So this is once again a one to pass. If I throw down another 10k shield, um, which looks like another heal trigger, that is going to be a two to pass. So a no pass since the OT is out. Going to be guarding that. And then of course this, this Dreadwing is still pretty powerful. Um, even if I don't have draw triggers, it is still powering up that Dreadwing, uh, giving an extra 5k. So now it is at plus 20k. In addition to the boost and the Persona Ride, um, pretty annoying rear guard. And all honesty, I think I'm misplaying a bit. I should probably target that thing a little bit harder. It is very annoying. And um, if I, if honestly, one of the ways to beat Omnigrugia is if you just take out all their rears. Um, they are stuck with just their Vanguard. Amanagujia herself doesn't really have any good rear guards, at least in set 12. That one rear guard is just the only one that's really good. In the next set, we get another good one, the Wolf Girl. Uh, but outside of that, if you just take out their rear guards, they're kind of just playing with mediocre rear guards and their Vanguard, which is honestly not as scary. I think that's probably Amanagujia's biggest weakness. Um, calling here. Um, we see the Vols de Braum, but I don't think I actually Persona Road here, so that is going to go completely to waste, so get things are going pretty unfortunately for me. Just the hit to Alista is just a hit to its consistency, which makes it, even though it's almost about as powerful as it ha was before, I think that like the fact that it's cut down so much on the consistently has made it very much on par with most of the other decks in this format, uh, so... 
We are going to have to swing here without any sort of uh, power bonus. I don't think I've even played the gem yet because I didn't Persona Ride and I didn't draw into another one. So I have things going very, very bad for me right now. Uh, but I'm going to do my best and see what I can do. I'm going to be call, uh, calling down the Ramona and Ophelia. The typical attackers would have been much nicer if I had a gem. But of course, you know, we can't have everything that we wish for. It was a swing of the 13. It's going to be blocked with that draw trigger. So it looks like we are playing the two draw triggers, the one front. Um, swinging the Vanguard in. And I believe this should be only 28, which is still a pretty decent number. So it's going to get PG'd as I flip over the over trigger here. Um, so... Things are looking pretty decent for me. This blue OT is going to let me add. I'm kind of deciding whether I want to add a Persona Ride or I want to add a PG. Um, theoretically, the Persona Ride lets me finish things off during the next turn. But I think I kind of am worried because of the cards in my hand that I will not be able to survive if I add the Persona Ride. Uh, just going to be drawing that card off OT and then hitting into a heal chair. Um... Once again, how many heal triggers have been proc this game? Uh, that one isn't going to be going off, but you know it's still kind of funny that we have all of these over or these over triggers, these heal triggers just going off. Um, of course, using the Aphelia skill, giving the 100 million to the Ramona because she is only at 18. Or uh, the column, I believe, it's actually at 23 because the Yuika got an extra 5k uh, since the Ramona was placed in her column. Swinging the 100 million for lethal. Um, going to make it so that my opponent has to have the pg or they will simply die here of course that is the play um and i do actually they do actually have the pg and i have another swing here uh this i think is a huge misplay i think i should swing this at the rear guard because even though this is a 36k a pretty decent number uh, i think that it is would have been just so much more impactful if i had swung at the rear guard and made it so that that Guggen ram had to be the main attacker uh, that would have been 18. That's just a trigger to guard. Um, but instead, I think I am swinging at the Vanguard here, um, which is going to call for a 25-point shield. Uh, that's not even enough to kill, so there's no real point in me actually doing this. If I'd gotten a critical trigger here, then I sh I would have just I should have just done that. But instead, I am going to be swinging. Uh, maybe I did actually swing at the rear because we're guarding for what is that 50k um, using the skill the cat there I think in order to just like give an extra 20k um but anyways looks like we do have everything omnikuja still has just like a really big hand there um riding into once again the old omnikuja deck looking a little thin there hmm maybe that's our next win con um but of course chicken top five not actually hitting anything off that which is you know perfectly fine you've kind of seen everything at this point we really are in the late game there isn't a lot left to be done here uh, as we see the Mask of Hydra once again put into the soul in order to Persona Ride the Mask of Omnigusia, drawing the card. Um, honestly, just like Omnigusia does have a decent amount of card draw, what with the Guggen Ram, what with the Dreadwing, um, what with the constant Persona Riding and the uh, three drive checks per turn. Uh, so things can, can uh, your deck can really get compressed insanely quickly as we call down the Ruin Magician. Probably not going to slow charge because, you know, we've got very few cards there. Um, calling down another, um, is it Dread? I've just been calling, I'm just going to keep calling it Dreadwing, um, as we decide to actually Soul Blast the two and draw a card. Uh, I guess we do kind of have to finish things this turn, otherwise we don't really have a next turn as we swing for the 31. I am going to just take this one, um, because it, they would need a double tr critical trigger in order, actually, in order to actually finish me here. Um, restanding, swing for 23. Uh, once again, we didn't actually get any triggers, so this isn't going to be a 33. Just going to be PGing that, being extra safe, um, drive checking into a nothing. Uh, the only issue here is that I do have to deal with two of these massive swings. They're both getting plus 25 in addition to the Persona Ride, uh, so that's plus 35, 45. Uh, realistically, I only actually have to guard one of these attacks because I still do only have four damage. So as long as I have enough shield value to guard one of these attacks, I am golden. I can probably just swing at rear and, you know... Um, take it but unfortunately I do make a miscalculation here where if you take a look at my hand I only need to guard for um, 45 and I think I have exactly 45 in my hand um, let's see that's 10 20 30 um, the extra um, 10k shield is 40 33 if I intercept with the Ramona that is 48 that would have been enough to guard um, I just really got mixed up with Omnigrugia's um, 
shield minusing, and I totally could have won this if I had uh, just like swung at rears during my next turn and then allowed him to deck out because he only has three cards in deck. But, you know, mistakes are made. That's going to be the end of the match. I hope you guys enjoyed, uh, but uh, I will see you guys in the next one. Don't forget to do all those YouTube things, like, comment, subscribe.